Here's a quick tutorial that shows you how to get an ILI9341 TFT LCD display working with an ESP32. The one I'm using here is the WaveShare 2.4 inch LCD module. This one features a 240 by 320 pixel display. What I like about this one is it's supplied with a ribbon cable that's really easy to hook up to the ESP32. No soldering is required. First up you should check that your display does actually support the ILI9341 driver. This module does because it has it printed on the back of the panel. If yours doesn't have this, then check the listing where you bought it from. Be aware not all screens from the same supplier use the same drivers. This is a smaller 1.5 inch WaveShare display, but it actually uses the SSD1351 driver. So opening up the Arduino IDE, the first thing we need to do is to install the graphics library. So we need to go to tools and then manage libraries and then search for TFT underscore ESPI. So we want this one by Bodmer and if it's not installed then install it. So this graphics library is a little different to the others. You have to configure it in the actual files rather than configuring it in your sketch. The good news is that you only need to do this once. However, if you're using different screens, then you'll need to change it every time you upload a sketch using a different type of screen. So if you're using Windows, the files are in C, Users, your Windows username, Documents, Arduino, Libraries, and TFT underscore ESPI. If you're using a different operating system, then I would recommend searching for this user underscore setup underscore select dot H, and you should be able to find it on your system somewhere. So you need to open this file in a text editor. So once it's opened, you need to look for your particular display in it. So I've highlighted all the ILI9341 display drivers that it comes with, and there's quite a lot of them. If you're using the WaveShare 320x240 display that I'm using in this video, then the one you want is user setup 42. So it's this file here. So you need to ensure that you've only uncommented one of the display drivers. Remember to save this file as well before you edit your sketch. So the user setup file itself is in the user setups folder. So the good thing about this is that you should see the pins listed. So this will help you with the pin diagram, how to connect up the ESP32 to your display. So one thing about this display that puzzled me is that it has a backlight pin, but this isn't on the smaller WaveShare OLED that I have. I'm not really a hardware expert, but I know that some screens have to have a backlight. If you're using a screen and you can't seem to see anything, then you might need to add this line. So it's TFT underscore BL is the pin, and you can connect it to any pin on the Arduino, or possibly some of them. I've used pin 5. Later in the video, I'll show you how to test the backlight. Aside from that, you shouldn't need to change anything in this file, although I changed the CS pin to 0 because that's the one that I normally use rather than pin 15. So once you've configured your library, I recommend using this Digital Rain example. It's a really good demo one and really easy to get up and running. So to use this one, you need to go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and search for Digital Rain. So it's this one. Digital Rain Animation by Eric Nam. So again, if it's not installed, then install it. Once it's installed, you can go to Files, Examples, and there should be one here. It's not that one. It's not the ESP Rainmaker, by the way. So the example is here for examples from custom libraries. Where are we? Too many now. Okay, so it's this one here, Digital Rain Animation. And I would use this one, Demo TFT ESPI Basic. So this is this example, and it doesn't require any configuration at all. So if you go to Sketch, Upload the Sketch, then you should see this really neat matrix-like effect. So another one that's quite easy to get working is the Animated GIF one. Check out this video on my channel because that explains how to get the Animated GIFs working. So as you can see, this animation looks pretty good on this screen. It's not as smooth as the smaller screen, but it does look pretty decent. Incidentally, if you want to use this with really large animated GIFs, then you have to go to Tools, and then Partition Scheme here, and I would change it to Huge App. So you can probably get an animated GIF up to 3 megabytes in size. The one I'm using is 1.1 megabytes. 
So I must admit I found the backlight a bit confusing. So if you want to test your backlight of your TFT display, then go to File and then Examples and under Basics, open the Blink sketch. Where it says LED built in here, you just need to change this to the pin number of the pin that the backlight pin is connected to. So mine was connected to pin 5. So change all these. Oh, 5. Okay, so I've changed those and just upload the sketch. So now you can see that it's blinking the backlight on and off. So it just kind of proves that backlight works. I'm not too sure of the purpose of the backlight in this particular OLED display. It just seems to make the screen all white when you turn it on and then it goes black when you turn it off again. However, I do have this really old TFT display and it seems to require a backlight. You can't see anything if it's not on. So here's a little comparison of the 1.5 inch OLED wave share display and the 2.4 inch display. I think they're both very decent displays. It's really nice that they come with screws so that if you're using it with a hardware project, you can easily screw it into whatever you're making. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.